Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the uh, Williams Return to Glory. Um, I have been playing the F1 Manager game a lot. Um, this is going to be a little bit few and far between, but I am going to continue playing this uh, this episode. But uh, in this episode, we are going to Imola and Miami. So looking at the pit crew, we're just going to do some uh, rotation, and we might hire some people. So we've gone through and uh, done some rotation. Uh, it's still second on the grid. Alright, so looking at the mail, we have stuff about the last race out in Melbourne. We got an interview with Jensen Button. Uh, Ricardo has claimed that your engine seems to be holding the team back, uh, and technical commentators seem to agree. Uh, he is right, but uh, we're going to tell him to button it. Right, so getting ready for Imola, we're going to go, uh, we don't have any uh, sponsors to select, tire selection, the usual 15, 10, 10. Uh, and we went through and we gave Ricardo um, the new gearbox that we made uh, the last episode that we uh, we did. Alright, so getting ready for practice, uh, Vettel, Ricardo go in the car. Uh, regressions kind of stayed uh, stable at the uh, three and a half stars for Vettel. Uh, like I said before, if he starts to get close to three stars, uh, we will probably end up putting Sonoda into the car and have Vettel be our reserve driver. Um, setup wise, uh, we're going to focus on the, uh, the soft tires for practice, uh, and hopefully we can also get, uh, the, uh, the mediums done as well, but we're going to move on and skip through practice. All right. So following practice, uh, we have Vettel 10th, Ricardo 9th, and top of the board is as expected, George Russell. All right. So getting ready for qualifying, uh, we're going to go quality trim level three, sweeter spots with Ricardo. Uh, we don't have sweeter spots for Vettel, but we just have a uh, qualifying level 3. Um, we got 98 uh, in perfect uh, for Sebastian, but looking at the forecast, we got rain, and that is going to dry out uh, at the end. But I think we're going to send them out for just a quick lap at the beginning, and then um, just send them straight back in, and then have them ready to go for that, uh, that dry patch uh, there at the end. Right, so Ricardo's starting his first lap. It's starting to get damp. I think we're going to be really, really slow. Yeah, this is uh, we sent them out a little too late. Or we couldn't send them out in, in time. So we're going to have a shot here near the end uh, to send them out on a uh, quick flyer. All right, so Vettel will start his lap. Uh, everyone's setting uh, their times in the uh, dry conditions. This is going to be our first real shot here. We're going to see where we place. We go 11th, or 10th, and 12th. Wait, so we are getting ready uh, for the Imola Grand Prix. Uh, we're going to put Ricardo on the soft tires, and we're going to put Vettel on the medium tires. I think uh, Ricardo is going to be able to uh, go fairly long, and then we might be able to put him on the medium tires. I think the medium tires are the way to go if you're just going to do a one-stop, but uh, um, yeah, I think we're just going to start Vettel on the medium tire just to kind of keep him out there long enough, hopefully catch a safety car of some sorts, and uh, just be able to get a, a cheap pit stop, but we're going to move on to the starting grid. So your starting grid for Imola is George Russell, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Sergio Perez, Pierre Gasly, Lewis Hamilton. Liam Lawson, Daniel Ricciardo, Teo Porcher, Sebastian Vettel, Esteban Ocon, Fernando Alonso, Dennis Hauger, Guan Yu Zhou, Lance Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Robert Schwartzman, and Oscar Piastri. Alright, so we've got the five red lights. We are one of five on the soft tires. Um, we are the second one on soft tires. It looks like uh, Hamilton is on the softs as well. Uh, we're going to see if we can push here just for a little bit. Uh, we're going to just keep them hammered down on the uh, the fuel here, uh, unless we can uh, get Vettel to last that long on his uh, on his current set of tires. We're going to wait till the temperatures get kind of high, mid-tier, and then we're going to put uh, Ricardo down on the neutral. Just going to let Vettel kind of attack for a little bit longer, and then we're going to put him on a neutral as well. Uh, with the refueling and stuff, I think it's just beneficial to just fill up the car the whole way and just have him on overtake. It's going to help you uh, gain pace throughout the race and uh, just kind of maintain better. I'm going to put Vettel on a neutral. We are uh, currently 10th, uh, right behind Porsche. 
uh, I think we really need to get these engines kind of worked out, because I think that's going to be the main uh, thing that's going to hurt us here uh, with, with our pace. I think we're just now starting to fall into the clutches of the Alphataris and the uh, and the Alpines, uh, which is kind of worrying. Uh, hopefully when we get these uh, this new engine in in about four days, uh, we'll be able to kind of put it in the car and it'll help out uh, whoever's uh, car we put it into. Uh, we've got Crash, Ocon. So Ocon in the Alfa Romeo. Is that going to lead to anything? No, it is not. Okay. I'm a bit out of... Uh out of it with this game i've been playing f1 manager and it's kind of funny to kind of jump back to this and kind of see what uh what we were playing before uh ricardo is going to jump ahead of ghastly but ghastly is going to come out ahead of vettel vettel's tire temperatures are going down slowly looks like the medium tire is the way to go here for this race so we might have just screwed over Ricardo, but I think we'll do a, a two-stopper on the soft tires with him. All right, so we're going to pit him next time. Actually, we're going to pit him next time. Bye. All right, so we're going to pit Ricardo onto the soft tires. We're going to fill up his fuel, and we're going to go balanced on the pit stop. So we're going to see what happens there with him. So Vettel's going to come out the final corner. We need him to go to about lap 21. Or just about lap 21. So we pushed really hard in the beginning. I think we can just get away with kind of going neutral to the end. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna have Vettel go one more lap, and then we're gonna pit him onto the uh, the medium tire. Need to fill up with fuel too. So, we're, so Vettel losing a bunch of time here, but we're gonna see where he comes out in comparison to everyone else. So he is thirteenth. Uh, looks like everyone ahead of us is gonna have to pit. Uh, we're close enough to them to where I'm not going to be super worried about uh, kind of what they're up to. I wonder if we just let Vettel kind of get the tires cold. Hopefully we don't see like a major pace drop off with, uh, with cold tires. Hart is holding steady in ninth. And he's far enough ahead of Vettel to where I think he can pit and still be ahead of him. So we got 16 laps remaining. How long were we able to get those uh, first sets of tires to last? We made those last uh, 16 laps. So I think we can even just go attack here with, uh, with, uh, with Ricardo here. And just be able to fuse these tires. Hit. Don't even refuel. And just, uh, yeah, we're going to bring him in this lap and let him attack out of the box as well. Uh, we uh, have 17 laps of fuel on the car, so we're just going to let him push through those seven laps of fuel. And we're going to let him push out of the box as well. So he's ahead of uh, Vettel. Vettel's making it to the end. Vettel's pace does not look terrible. He's holding pretty good there. Ah, uh, he is losing a bit to Ricardo. Got a blue flag. We got 12th place, or 11th place now, Lawson behind us. Lawson looks like he's going to make it to the end of the race. We're going to go into neutral now with Ricardo. So Ricardo looks like he's going to be good to the end of the race. We're gonna go push, or we're gonna attack actually with uh, with Vettel just to kind of get some uh, some warmth into these tires. We're gonna go on to neutral now because we've lost uh, lost place here. We got Porsche behind us. He's gonna pass us as well. We got Alonso 
kind of 1.7 seconds back. It actually looks like Ricardo is going to have a bit of a challenger here with Lawson. And hopefully we don't get caught out by a bunch of uh, lap car, or lead cars here. And yeah, we're starting to lose grip. We're going to just have Vettel attack to the end of the race. Just get warm to the tires. We've got two laps remaining. Going to neutral now. He's got warmth. The blue flag for Vettel. And we are going to cross the line with Ricardo and get our two points from our ninth place finish. All right, so looking at our results leaving Imola, uh, we were uh, 12th and 9th. Uh, your points were uh, Lawson, Ricardo, Hamilton, Perez, Verstappen, Norris, Gasly, your podium, Leclerc, Sainz, and your winner, uh, seems like every race this season, it's George Russell. All right, so your point standings leaving Imola. Uh, we still have the uh, bottom seven who have not scored points. Uh, we stay the same uh, in, a, in our position here. Uh, Vettel still on two points. Uh, R Ricardo has 10, so he's got a okay-ish gap uh, to Lawson behind, but uh, we see Pierre Gasly and the McLaren moving ahead of the Red Bull and the Mercedes of uh, Perez and Hamilton, respectively. Uh, he's got 30 points. Uh, Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari moves all the way up to second now. He's tied. Or there's a three-way tie for second with uh, Sainz, Norris, and Verstappen, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how that changes going into the next race, but uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the Constructors. All right, so your Constructors Championship, top of the board is Mercedes. Uh, most of those points are coming from uh, from Russell, absolutely dominating these first four races. Uh, Ferrari in second place with 97. Speaking of ties, we got McLaren and Red Bull tied for uh, third uh, place in the Constructors. Uh, we have us uh, a little bit ahead of Alphatari, but um, we got Alfa Romeo and Alpine tied for uh, seventh. And then you got Aston and uh, Haas tied for who's not the worst team. All right, so from the team report screen, um, Vettel is getting very close to that three-star rating. Um, yeah, he's just progressively regressing uh, throughout this uh, throughout this career. So is Ricardo, which is very sad to see, especially with how much we spent on the two of them. Um, it looks like we uh, we might actually promote Yuki Sonoda for the next race. So leaving Imola, we're gonna have uh, two hundred and four thousand dollars. So round two, the Formula 3 race uh, has ended. Uh, we have Van Dorn, uh, Max Gunther, uh, second place, and uh, Giuliano Alesi, uh, third step of the podium. Uh, we're going to scroll through here and show the results for the, the rest of the 18 drivers. Uh, we have uh, top of the board, uh, Parente, 34 points. Uh, you got a tie between uh, Van Dorn and Degrassi for uh, second place. Uh, you got Posma kind of close up there. But yeah, just a fairly even spread all the way down until you hit these uh, bottom five drivers who have not scored a point yet. Looking at the team standings, uh, Carlin still on top. Uh, Prema, second place, uh, 11 points behind. So decent gap actually between the uh, the first and second place uh, teams here. But uh, so far this year, uh, in the two races they've done, uh, every single team has scored a point. All right, so looking at the driver's screen, um, Vettel is just kind of regressing very, very quickly. Uh, he's now down to uh, three, or three and a bit stars, but he's kind of ticked down under that point to where I think we really need to put Sonoda into the car, especially with him being four stars and kind of having those stats that are uh, as good as he has. Yeah, I, I really didn't want to do this, and I know he's been performing okay, but yeah, it's just uh, just kind of having that regression. I don't want to keep him and then kind of let these uh, these points kind of escape us, especially in the position that we're in. Uh, so we're going to promote uh, Yuki Sonoda to... Uh, to the first team uh, to pair Daniel Ricardo. Also an interesting thing to note, if you click Renew Contract, uh, so Vettel says he's gonna be retiring at the end of our year. Uh, so he is gonna be done. Uh, so we'll probably, uh, at the end of the year, depending on our position, uh, we'll put him in the seat or, uh, or something for the final race. Uh, and then looking at Ricardo, uh, he's gonna be retiring at the end of the year as well. So he is, uh, uh, we're going to have two drivers in our team that are going to have to be uh, replaced for next year. Looking at our pit crew, we're just going to do some uh, rotation real quick. All right, so we've gone through, we've rotated people, and, and we also uh, hired one person. So uh, I believe that would be um, a Cardi. All right, so from the mail, uh, we have stuff about 
Russell's absolutely domination of the season. Uh, we're going to go to our interview uh, where Max Verstappen's agent has been telling reporters all over town that we are interested in signing him. We're going to say absolutely so we can get the trait. Uh, and we get the trait that he is uh, open to discussing terms with us for the next five weeks. All right, so looking at part improvement, uh, we're going to focus on getting the engine done. Uh, it's a new one that just came in. Uh, it's got 40%. It'll be done before the race. You see it's got a 1549 uh, initial stat, and it's got a 1589 cap. Uh, so that will be uh, ready to go and hopefully uh, helps impact our performance. So looking at our part design, uh, currently our lowest uh, part is the suspension. So I believe we're going to build a suspension. Uh, and then potentially the uh, the next uh, part that we're going to have to build again, it might be another suspension or another engine. All right, so now from part design, uh, this is our new suspension part, and it might actually be done before the race. So we could put this on the car uh, for Miami. All right, so your Formula 2 results from Imola. Uh, you have Yuri Vips winning, getting the fastest lap as well. You got Mitch M Evans, second place, uh, and then Prima, and then you have Alex Pelot, uh, the IndyCar champion, uh, in third place with 15 points. Uh, looking through here, I'm just going to scroll through and show you uh, where everyone else has finished. Looking at the uh, the championship, it's fairly close. Uh, you got kind of a, the two top contenders kind of separated from everyone else, uh, Nick Tandy and Antonio Giovinazzi. Uh, Yuri Vips is kind of getting up there fairly close. Uh, you got a bit of a gap to Neil Yanni in fourth, but uh, yeah, fairly even field spread. And then you got kind of uh, the uh, four at the bottom who've not scored points. Looking at the teams, it's a fairly, actually it is a close battle. Um, I'd say everyone's within touching distance of everyone else, um, but then you kind of have this backpack of about um, three cars in the back here that uh, uh, maybe you're going to have a difficult time of uh, catching the cars ahead of them. All right, so we have a politics vote. Um, it's about the removal of CODA. So we have currently on the schedule uh, Miami, CODA, and Road America. CODA, I don't think we need CODA. So I'm going to vote to remove CODA as an American. Um, you know, I should be against this, but I actually don't really like CODA all that much. I think it's a little bit overrated. I think it's kind of a meh track. We should be going to probably a different track in the U.S. That's a better better track that gives off better racing. Um, so uh, who's going to be in favor? Um, oh, who should be in favor? Okay, so we're going to vote. Uh, how much vote power do we have? We got 10. You know what? We'll use, we'll use three. And we're going to vote for the removal of Coda. We're going to skip to the end. Got eight votes to... Uh, Five. So Coda is removed from the calendar. So from part improvement, uh, we have the new suspension in. Uh, it's got 50% on the uh, reliability. If we can get 12 per day, uh, hopefully uh, we have this in a position to where we can kind of put it on the car uh, for uh, the next race. But we'll see. Uh, it is a 15, uh, 15 uh, initial stat, so it's about 30 better than the one we had before, and its cap is uh, 15, uh, 55. So from part design, we are just going to start focusing, uh, as I mentioned before, on whatever part's on the lowest. Uh, so we're going to go work on our engine next. From part design, uh, this is going to be the engine that we are going to build. It will be done in 20 days. So getting ready for Miami. Uh, no sponsor selection to choose from. Uh, something to note, uh, profit uh, from the race is going to be up because uh, Yuki Sonoda uh, has the trait of financial backing so we're going to get 877,000 uh or actually we're going to get half of that um uh or maybe we actually will get the whole 877 because it's going to say 50 percent if the driver takes part in practice only we're going to have vettel in the car for practice so uh uh that won't be an issue tire selection 15 10 10 part fitting we put the new suspension on yuki uh the only thing is it's like 62 percent reliability so hopefully it can uh, last till the end of the race all right, so getting ready for practice. Uh, we said we're going to put Vettel in the car. Um, we are. Uh, Rain-wise, it's only going to be rain in the beginning, so we're going to send them out. Uh, we're going to focus on the medium set of tires. Uh, just because I think we're going to start focusing on the harder compounds. Uh, seems like tire wear is uh, being pretty much a huge issue this year. 
So if we're able to kind of do a one stop pretty easily, that'll uh, that'll help us with our strategy. But we're gonna move on and skip through qualifying or practice. All right. So following practice, we have Ricardo in tenth. A uh, Vettel is sixth, and top of the board as always is George Russell. All right. So getting ready for qualifying, uh, we have quality trim uh, in sweeter spots uh, for both cars. Uh, the only thing is is that we have rain uh, right near the end of the session so we're gonna send them out let them come back in and then we're gonna send them out uh, right after that so uh, managed to get perfect on both setups so that's cool to see but we're gonna move on to qualifying all right so Ricardo starts his first lap comes up behind a little bit of traffic so he is gonna go top of the board because he's the first one out Got Norris and Russell to jump ahead of us. So we got Ricardo starting his second lap. We waited a second. I think it might be a bad decision though. But we might be able to get this in at the optimal track condition. We come through the last sector. It's going to be damp. Uh, it looks like we're going to go 6th and 11th. All right, so we're getting ready for the Miami Grand Prix. Uh, we have 48 laps in this race. Uh, I'm going to bet on the uh, medium tires uh, on both cars. Uh, I know it's a little bit unfortunate that we had to put take Vettel out of the car, but this is going to be Yuki Sano's first start for the team. So hopefully we can get a good result out of him today. We have Ricardo starting 6th and Yuki starting 11th. Uh, it should be a simple uh, one-stop strategy uh, with these two cars. Uh, and this is going to be our driver strategy going into the race, but we're going to move on to the starting grid. All right, so your starting grid for my, the Miami Grand Prix is going to be Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, Pierre Gasly, George Russell, Max Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, Robert Schwartzman, Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda, Teo Porcher, Juan Yu Zhou, Liam Lawson, Lewis Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Mick Schumacher, Esteban Ocon, Lance Stroll, and Dennis Hauger. All right, so we have the five red lights. We're gonna get off the line here. Ricardo's gonna move up and move down a little bit. It's a little bit all over the place. Yuki's moving up positions here. We're gonna push these until we can kind of get the uh, the tire temperature set in them. I'm actually gonna put both of them onto attack. So we're 10th and 11th at the moment. We're behind Alonso. Alright, so we're just going to push them until the uh, tire temperatures get pretty high. It seems like it's going to be pretty easy to kind of jump them down onto neutral here and uh, just have them coast to the end of the race. Or not end of the race, but until they have to pit next. So Hamilton is the only uh, medium compound tire runner ahead of us. I think everyone ahead of us uh, is going to have to pit uh, two more times this race. The strategy, everyone's pushing because of that fuel limit. So we are ahead of Alonzo, so we got ahead of him a while ago, and we got Schwartzman ahead of us currently, so hopefully we can get ahead of Schwartzman here, but it looks like he's got some pace for this weekend. Sonoda holding pretty steady in 12th. Looks like we get a time penalty for George Russell, who's been uh, uh, the most dominant driver of the year, but he is all the way down in 6th place, uh, 20 seconds off the lead, so it's going to be a hard uh, recovery drive for him here. We actually have both McLarens in the top two. That's interesting to see. All right, we have our tire temperatures down super low, so we're going to have to push. Uh, we're going to have them attack uh, until they're getting their tires in the window, uh, and then we're going to go back on to, uh, on to push. So Russell Pitts comes out ahead of us. All right, we're in our kind of tire window. And we're going to hold push. We need to make these last until lap 24, but that's going to be, it looks like, a little bit of a stretch. All right, we're going to put both cars on a neutral now. We're going to keep an eye on the uh, tire temperatures.
So we're going to wait for Schwartzman to pit ahead of us. Hopefully Schwartzman pits before lap uh, lap 24 here. So we know that he's not going to be able to make it on a one stop. We're going to hold these guys on neutral here. We've got about two more laps to go until we can uh, consider pitting. So we're going to let them lose the pace uh, just so we can kind of get them on to that, uh, that, that one stop strategy. Alright, so we're on lap 24. We are going to pit uh, Daniel because Daniel's the, uh, the highest up runner. We're going to fuel his car up to balance pit stop, and then we're going to make Yuki go uh, another lap. It looks like he's doing a fairly good job with his wear as well. Alright, so Daniel comes out alongside Yuki. We're going to pit Yuki onto the medium tire. We're going to fill up Yuki's car. We're going to make sure that... Uh, we also keep an eye on the fuel here because it's going to be pretty easy for us uh, potentially to get these. Uh, also, we need to push an attack out of the box with uh, Sonoda as well. We're going to get these tires really, really, really hot, and then we are going to uh, drop them down in a neutral up until the, uh, the point to where they start to get cold. Uh, and then uh, that's going to be our uh, strategy going to the end. We're going to just kind of hold neutral, and then when we need to, we're going to uh, uh, run uh, uh, push. We're about to overheat the tires with Ricardo. We do, so we're going to go on to neutral. Sonoda is already overheating, so we're going to put him on to neutral as well. Here, we 10th and 13th. It uh, looks like Porsche ahead of uh, Sonoda is going to have to pit. It looks like Alonso's on the same strategy we are. Uh, so it's going to look uh, pretty difficult for uh, us to get Sonoda into the points. Noda does have more wear available to him, so hopefully uh, we can kind of use that to our advantage here uh, later on in the race. Because we look like we're on equal footing here with at least two cars ahead of Ricardo and Alonso ahead of Sonoda, so I don't think we're going to be gaining those places pretty easily. Alright, so we're going to be pretty close here to kind of start going on to push. We're going to let Ricardo get blue flagged here, and then we're going to go on to push. Same with Sonoda. We'll let Sonoda push as Sonoda gets blue flagged from second place and third place and fourth place. So George Russell just set the fastest lap. It looks like Norris is going to have to pit. Norris is going to have an 11 second gap over Russell, who has dominated this uh, first half of the season. With six laps remaining, I'm actually going to have Sonoda attack. And I'm also going to put Ricardo on attack as well, just to kind of gap uh, Schwartzman behind. Uh, but we're going to jump on board uh, with uh, the uh, short swearing. Uh, Japanese driver Yuki Sonoda Let's see what he can do here alright so it looks like we're going to need to put, actually put Ricardo onto neutral here because he's not going to have enough tire to last till the end of the race so Sonoda is he's got about I gotta wait until Alonso gets through all these blue flags here so we're in the final lap here so Ricardo is in ninth place and holding steady here. He's going to finish in ninth, and we are going to have Sonoda finish in his debut for our team in 12th. All right, so following the Miami Grand Prix, we have Yuki Sonoda finishing in 12th position, his first start for us. Uh, Robert Schwartzman gets up in 10th place. I thought he wasn't going to be able to get there with uh, kind of that two stop strategy, but uh, he proves us wrong. Uh, so our points uh, for this race is uh, Schwartzman, Ricardo, Hamilton, Perez, Verstappen, Sainz, Leclerc, the podium, Pierre Gasly, George Russell, and your winner, I believe, for the first time in this career mode is Lando Norris. Looking at the uh, driver's standings, we now have eight drivers at the bottom that have not scored a point. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda, uh, we need to get him some points uh, coming up through the year. Uh, Vettel moves down a spot. Uh, 
but he'll have a shot later in the year, potentially in the last race, to uh, to be able to kind of gain a couple more points before uh, before he officially retires. Uh, Ricardo uh, is currently in ninth. Uh, Schwartzman moves up to eleventh. Uh, looking at up the field, Norris uh, with his win moves up ahead of Carlos Sainz, who is in third, uh, to get close uh, to George Russell and kind of knock him off of his uh, his current streak that he's had going. Looking at your team's championships, uh, we are still fifth. Uh, it seems like the gap between us and the uh, the four teams ahead of us has gotten a lot bigger uh, between uh, now and uh, the end of last season. McLaren was fairly close to us, but uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we've got a, quite a big gap between us and them, but McLaren have stepped up. It looks like they might be the, uh, the contenders here to fight uh, Mercedes to the end of the year. So good news uh, with us bringing Sonoda onto the team. Uh, we are going to get, um, yeah, we're gonna get one million dollars uh, total from that race, and that'll uh, keep going throughout the rest of the season. So that's cool to see. So that's gonna end today's episode. Uh, we at least get points this episode. Uh, I think it's kind of uh, kind of disheartening to kind of still just be hovering around to where we were at the end of last year. I think uh, a lot of the teams that are kind of uh, close to us uh, have closed the gap so Aftari, Alfa Romeo are starting to kind of knock on the doors and kind of uh, be in contention with uh, with us kind of getting in the points uh, on a regular basis but uh, we got points two races in a row uh, unfortunately we had to put Vettel into the reserve seat uh, he's still a valuable asset for the team uh, with that feedback kind of helps us in practice kind of gain um, all those things we need for the strategy during the race and also helps us gain it a lot quicker than Sonoda would uh, Sonoda also helps the team with his uh, financial backing, so uh, we could potentially uh, look at maybe at the, end, at the end of the year with the uh, the money we gain from him, uh, potentially going for a, uh, a big uh, HQ upgrade, so that's potentially a good thing for us. Uh, looking at here at the standings, uh, Norris with one win, that's going to be his first win in this uh, this career, uh, in, his, in his entire career um, from this uh, career mode, but um yeah kind of just seeing mclaren up here is really cool having them fight with mercedes george coming out getting his first win and then next four or next three after the first one uh, and then having norris win uh, is cool to see uh, it's kind of why we play these games just kind of have these uh these alternate uh history timelines that we can follow and uh and influence ourselves so uh, if you like this episode like comment subscribe all that dumb youtube stuff and i hope you have a good rest of your week